boy to rule aka mega butts in today's video we're looking at the top eight deck lists from dortmund regions i'm super pumped to get into these top eight deck lists especially the first in place deck list specifically but before we jump into these top eight deck lists if you've been enjoying the content i'm making so far here on the channel don't forget to leave a like smash the subscribe button because i really would appreciate it Alrighty, guys let's jump right in to the eighth place deck list Alrighty, guys starting us off here with the eighth place deck list we got gardevoir ex now Gardevoir EX is going to be a deck that we're going to be seeing quite a bit in this top 8. Three deck lists, actually, funny enough, they're going to be all in a row. So I'm not going to spend too much time on all three of these deck lists. I'm just going to kind of talk about what stands them out from the other deck lists in top 8 here, what I like about them, what I don't like. Things that I like about this deck list, I like to see Worker in my Gardevoir EX decks be able to remove that path to the peak or anything of that nature because Gardevoir EX needs path to, well, not exist. So you can second embrace and put a bunch of energies on stuff, Luminia Sign, and sometimes even Roar of the Sword on Zacian if you're really behind in that situation. But not shocked to see Gardevoir EX in top 8 at all. Gardevoir EX has kind of made a little bit of a resurgence coming back and has shown that it's still got stuff before it loses all of its really good attackers come rotation. Something else that I don't like about this deck is I don't like seeing Screamtail. I think Screamtail is such a versatile and good attacker in Gardevoir, and I feel like Gardevoir is almost in a position where Screamtail is one of those go-to attackers, especially after rotation more so. But I just love Screamtail as a card. I think it's very useful in a lot of matchups, but this person opted to not play guard or sorry to play screen tail but to go with a little bit more of a heavy count of you know tech cards or supporters or anything of that nature and still manage to perform very well i just think scream is a really good attacker and can use be used in very good circumstances against very specific matchups going into our seventh place deck this year we got our second Gardevoir EX deck. This one is playing Scream Tail, but decided to not play Jirachi because maybe they didn't think Lawson was going to be that popular or anything of that nature. But I like to see the Scream Tail in here. Jirachi is one of those cards where if Lost Box isn't going to be very popular or you don't think that you know you have a bad matchup against or you know how to play against it, or if you just kind of risk it and just try to dodge the Lost Box decks, then not playing Gardevoir or sorry, playing Jirachi in Gardevoir does make sense. However, I feel like there's so many different Lost Box decks, you know, Lost Box, you know, Lost Sablezard, Lost Tina, Lost Paradox, Lost, like, Lost Glasses, all these things have Sableye in them, and I feel like it's just, you probably want to play Jirachi. But this person also managed to slide in two Avery into their list. I really like Avery in Gardevoir as well, not as much as I like Worker, um, but Avery can be really good in the mirror match or maybe even against like lost box decks as well And maybe that's why they decided to not play Jirachi and just kind of have that two Avery in there to try to force their opponent into a position where they have to discard down to a bunch of stuff and then just deal with the Sableyes that way, but I still Like this. I like that they managed to fit one worker in here I think workers a great card in Gardevoir. So very nicely done here Going into our 6th place deck list, our last Gardevoir EX deck here. This one opting to play Screamtail, Jirachi, Manaphy, but not opting to play Cresselia. Now, I don't love Cresselia in Jirachi. I prefer Screamtail, um, but I still also love the fact they managed to fit Worker in. Some people have been cutting Worker, like... I mean, all these three players have played Worker, but I have seen lists where people aren't playing Worker, and I think that's just a terrible idea. I think... Worker is one of those cards where you almost need to play it because if they get a path to stick and you can't bump it with like a vacuum or your own stadium or something, you're in a tough spot. But this person also decided to play the new card, Moonlit Hill. I don't quite know how I feel about Moonlit Hill in Gardevoir. Um, I haven't really gotten to test it yet or play with it that much, but it does seem, in theory, could be very good. So very nicely done here to our sixth place deck. Going into fifth place here, we got Fusion Mew. Now, Fusion Mew is one of those things where we're just going to see it until it rotates. I've said it a million times, and I'm going to keep saying it, unfortunately, until it does rotate come April. Mew VMAX is going to be here until then. And there's this weird thing where Mew always just seems to slide into top eight, no matter how much Charizard there is, no matter how much Roaring Moon there is. It Mew always manages to just slide in, and I feel like the Pokemon company and many other people are just like, Mew's whatever. We've printed counters for it. 
it leaves in April. I, I don't know, just deal with it for two more months, I guess. And that's just what it is. Um, but very nicely done here. I'd like to see the ESQ as well. Um, I'm more of a Deoxys person in my Mew deck. I think Deoxys just feels a little bit more spicy, and I kind of like it in that variant. However, something that I wish this deck did play more of is Path of the Peak, actually. I think that just being able to remove your own paths and then repath your opponent just by, like, Judge Path. You know, Lost Vacuum, remove your own path, and then draw a bunch of cards, play Path, hit Judge, and then just like attack or something, I feel like it's so good in Mew. And I think I'm so used to just seeing, you know, two, three copies in Mew VMAX that seeing one copy kind of threw me off guard genuinely. But very nicely done here. Mew VMAX is going to be until here, until April, until it rotates. So we're just going to have to deal with it, unfortunately. Going into our fourth place deck here, we got like Lost, Sablezard, plus Moon, plus Pidgeot, plus Mawile. I don't know. There's so many Lost Boxes that it's so hard to come up with names. So I'm just going to call this Lost Sables Art and Friends. There we go. Lost Sables Art and Friends. Got that Roaring Moon. I like that a lot. We, we were able to see the Tempting Trap really show its stuff at Knoxville Regionals, actually, where Aiden Coos was able to just, like, Tempting Trap repeat over and over again um, and winning the game that way against Roaring Moon where they couldn't switch anything out and they would end up decking themselves. So I definitely like Mawile. I've actually been dabbling with it a little bit in my lost tina deck and i actually kind of like it there's a couple times where i'm able to just like slow down the game a little bit and draw a bunch of cards and really put the favor back you know really push the momentum back into my favor which feels really nice but i like this deck overall i love that you're still able to fit you know the pidgeot and the forest seal stone and then just able to put it right back into the deck and you have that loop if, as long as you can, like, not get pathed or spirit tomed or anything, and you can deal with the spirit tome or a path and make it so your opponent can't play another one or something, you're able to tempting trap and never mill yourself and win that way. So kind of like stall does it in a way, which I think is really cool. So very nicely done here. I like this deck a lot. I can't wait to actually pop this into TCG Live and give it a go. I've been really dabbling in Lost Sables Art a little bit more recently and been having tons of fun with it. So, going into our third place deck here, we got Lost Tina. Now, this is actually the 60 of Lost Tina that I've been playing. Um, I actually decided to put Spirit Tome in the deck. I felt like it fit a little bit more, and it was able to help me win a little bit more matchups. Early game Charizard against Stall, you know, against things like even, like, Maridon a little bit helps because then, like, you have to slow down their, their Raikus and stuff. And it just being able to, like, the mirror match where they're trying to... Pidgeot and loop that a bunch of times. It just definitely helps a lot, and I really appreciate it for that aspect. Um, but when I don't play Spirits Home, I actually ended up just going to two copies of Escape Rope instead. So this is the most recent 60 I played of Lost Tina, but the 60 I'm probably going to go back to is take out Spirits Home, go back to a second Escape Rope. Um, I love the one copy of Avery and Lost Tina. I've actually really come around to it. Manaphy is a great card but i feel like lost tina is in a position where as long as you don't over bench your come phase and bench your one sableye when you need to attack with it you're not really in a position where you're that worried about raiding greninja sure they might take you know maybe two prizes at most off of you by like double co like ko come Fae. but at that point lost tina is a comeback deck anyway so you just rock sand your pathway to victory and that's the deck really so definitely not shocked to see lost tina here it's definitely probably the powerhouse i would say right now of the format people are calling it best deck in format some people say it's second best next to charizard but i feel like lost tina has proved itself that it is a little bit more consistent and a little bit more favorable in a lot of matchups as opposed to charizard because we haven't seen many charizards in top eights or top 16s as often as we've seen lost tina so very nicely done to our second or sorry third place lost tina player here Going into second place, a deck that nobody expected to see make it in top eight, let alone top four, and then make it all the way to the finals, Goldango EX. Now, this deck is so fun to play. I personally like to play this more than Chen Pao. I like the coin bonus. It feels good to just, like, make it rain, discard a bunch of energies, and then just hit a really big number. Feels really good. Polk is a really good early game attacker. Helps you open up with Moonlight Shuriken plays later on. And I also love the fact that they're playing more water energies than they are metal energies because 
Goldengo only needs one energy to attack, so you really only need to play, you know, three to four metal energies in the deck and then fill the rest with water energy so you can get that subspace swell and you're able to start portal, put things onto Radiant Greninja and attack with that as well. But something that I don't like about the deck is I'm not the biggest fan of one copy of Roxanne. I would rather just play Iono. And the reason I'd rather play Iono is because I feel like sometimes Goldengo is, can be very fast and very aggressive where it can take KOs really quickly early on. And then Roxanne almost becomes a dead card for like the beginning part of the game. So I prefer Iono because it's a little bit more versatile. You're able to use it earlier on if you need to and later on and still have a really good effect. Sure, you might harm yourself a little bit in the process, but I feel like it's not as situational as that one copy of Roxanne may be. So that's pretty much the only thing I'd really change about the deck is changing that Roxanne to an Iono. You could argue going to one Avery and four workers a little bit more important, but you're also playing four Pokestop and three workers. So you have seven ways to remove Path to the Peaks or other, sta other stadiums you don't want in play. So playing, you know, seven removal things of that and going to a second Avery can I understand and I see the perspective. So very cool. I'm super, super pumped and super like just awesome to see Goldengo make it so far and do so well at a regional. And I think it really put the spotlight on Goldengo. I've been seeing it way more on TCG Live. And I think this is like the breakthrough that Goldengo needed to really secure itself as a good deck. People kind of made fun of it saying it's a meme deck. It's a rogue deck. It's, you know, it's tier two. It's bad. But when played properly and piloted very nicely, this deck can perform very, very well. I play, I see it all the time. My locals, people, you know, people go 3-1 with it, 4-0 with it. It's a really good deck and very consistent at that. All right, going into our first place deck list here, Chen Pao Backscalibur with Iron Hands. Now, you want to talk about a deck that I never thought that I would see win a regional. Chen Pao was it. Genuinely, Chen Pao is known as Brick City. It's known as just like a okay deck. You can day two with it as long as you run hot. And it's one of those things where everybody picks on Chen Pao because it's very clunky. You have all these moving pieces and sometimes your backscalibers and stuff. You can't get there because you're running out of candies or things of that nature. But in a best of three where you're able to have that like one brick game every once in a while it really can push through and iron hands being with all these charizard decks and lost box and all these other things that ampy very much can help you take early prize cards very quick and very often chen pao having a pretty okay time into things like charizard as well being able to actually hit that big number very consistently in chen pao is very nice it's very fast and Funny enough, Chen Pao actually is a deck I played to my locals just last night. Did not perform nowhere near as well as this person did, um, but managed to go 2-2 with it. It was a fun time. I might come back to Chen Pao in the future. I just, I didn't play with Iron Hands. I might try with Iron Hands, but very cool. And I'm really glad to see Chen Pao have that breakthrough moment that it really needed to secure itself as a good deck, as a competitive, viable option, because I think Chen Pao has potential especially after post rotation because sure you lose cross switchers and like battle vip pass but you can use buddy poffins so that kind of helps out with battle vip pass a little bit and as far as cross switcher goes well we get prime catcher you can just play pokemon catcher roaring moon already does that anyway so that's something you could also do i think chen pal is in a really good spot going into post rotation and i'm so glad that it finally got that big win it deserved Alrighty guys, let's jump right in to that outro. Alrighty guys, that's going to do it here for our top 8 decklists at Dortmund Regionals. Absolutely cool stuff. Finally seeing Goldengo and Chen Pao have their breakthrough moments. Speaking of Goldengo and Chen Pao, I want to hear you guys' thoughts on something. So let me know down in the comments below if you guys prefer Goldengo or do you prefer Chen Pao. Me personally, I'm probably more of a Goldengo person myself, even though I just played Chen Pao to my locals last night. So, alrighty guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.